Hey, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to another Life Lab session. And uh, today, in our second session for this month, uh, we're talking about uh, HDBSD. So I'm trying to uh, explain or show you what HDBSD is and what are the features, the benefits, and when you work with HDBSD, um, what is important to know. The, the session today will be about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, I, I tried to uh, make it as um, understandable as possible, even though HDBSD itself is a, is a technical topic. So um, if you have any questions, um, if you're not the first time with us, uh, you know how it works. We have the chat function. Feel free to uh, type any question into the chat. Uh, either myself or one of my colleagues will answer the question. Um, yeah, so I would say uh, let's start and uh, let's talk about HDBSD. So what, what is HDBSD? HDBSD is uh, is uh, actually it's it's not a protocol. It's um, it's an organization. It's a standard where different companies uh, confirmed uh, came together and uh, confirmed and said, "Hey, we are working together on one standard, uh, and we're all working uh, on the, on the same standard to connect devices together." And that's from the official HDBSD side. So the next couple of slides are, are uh, more informational for you that you know what HDBSD itself is. So HDBSD is, uh, is a standard for the distribution of uh, audio video signals. But beside of audio video, we have Ethernet, we have control signals, we have uh, USB, and we have uh, power which we want to transmit over a single cable. And that's exactly what, what HDBSD will allow us to do. So I, I just mentioned it, we have one single cable, one CAT cable, and we can transmit audio video. We can transmit control signals like RS-232, uh, like IR. Uh, we can transmit ethernet and USB signals and power over a single line. Um, that's the five play concept. And uh, just uh, to, to say it upfront, uh, yes, HDBSD can transmit those five different signals over one single cable, but not all HDBSD chipsets will support this, uh, those features. So we have audio video, we have uh, uh, Ethernet, we have USB support, and we have the control signals and power over cable. So let, let's look into it in detail. What does it mean? Audio video is up to 4K uncompressed, uh, supporting all HDMI 1.4 features, almost zero latency. So HDBST is, is super fast in transmitting audio video signals from point to point. Uh, it's uh, faster than any AV over IP solution. And uh, yeah, the, the latency is against, uh, the latency is against zero. In terms of audio, uh, all standard audio formats are support, uh, supported. So this includes Dolby Digital, DTS, uh, True HD, uh, and uh, DTS HD Master Audio. Of course, PCM, uh, stereo signal, and, and so on is also supported. And most of the uh, uh, HD-based devices, extenders, have also an analog audio output. So you, you see, you can, uh, over a single cable, you can transmit everything you need uh, in, a, in a, for example, in a meeting room. Um, Ethernet, Ethernet obviously is a little bit limited uh, because of the bandwidth. So we cannot transmit a gigabit or 10 gigabit. What we can still transmit 100 MB uh, over over the CAT cable, uh, along with the audio, video signal, the control signal, and so on. So this means uh, if you have, for example, a, a display, a, a smart TV, and uh, an extended source, and you want to connect things together using HDBSD. You can also connect your smart TV uh, on the network port on your HDBSD receiver, and it will be uh, online and will have access to the internet. And 100 MB Ethernet is still more than enough to uh, to maintain your your display. USB support um, HDBSD uh, since HDBSD 2.0, it's supporting USB. So you can now transmit USB uh, signals over the same CAT cable. 
This includes uh, keyboard, video mouse, and so on, touchscreen, uh, actually any USB 2.0 device. There is a limitation, which I will uh, talk about uh, later on. But just to let you know, USB uh, is featured with the, with the HDBase-T chipset, and you can transmit USB signals uh, over your HDBase-T line. Uh, various control signals. Um, we, we know that uh, in a meeting room, in a, a control room, in, uh, in most of our applications, we need control signals. We need to control the display. We need to control uh, um, a speaker phone. Uh, we need to control different devices in our room. So with HDBST, you don't have to run an extra R32 cable or an extra uh, IR line. This can be sent over your HDBase-T uh, connection. And there is R32, there is uh, um, IR, there is CEC, and there are, there are many other uh, control protocols which you can transmit over your HDBase-T line. And last but not least, power over cable. And uh, for, for a good reason, I'm writing here power over cable and not PoE, because uh, HDBase-T does support power over cable. This includes PoE, but there is also POH, there is also POC. There are different technologies to transmit power over the category cable. And it's very important that you know uh, what kind of uh, standard your device is using uh, to make sure it's compatible with the, with the uh, receiver. For example, if you have a transmitter you put, uh, supporting PoE and the receiver uh, supporting PoE, those two, by, uh, to, those two devices can, can power each other. Uh, and uh, if it's a bidirectional connection, you can either connect the power supply on the uh, receiver or on the transmitter. And uh, your, your system will, will work, will be up and running. But if you, for example, take a transmitter, which is running on POH, and uh, you're connecting it to a matrix, which is supporting uh, PoE, you cannot power the transmitter, but you can damage the, the switcher because on POH, you're transmitting the power to the, to the matrix and the matrix uh, cannot handle POH, just for an example. So here, it's very important um, that you keep in mind there are different technologies uh, like POH, like PoE, like POC. And uh, those are different ways to transmit the power signal and you cannot mix them up together so if you have a, a system or a setup where you have PoE devices, make sure you're just using other PoE devices in this uh, setup, or make sure you're just using only devices which are supporting POH. Uh, let's talk about the HDBase-T chipsets we're, we're having um, at the moment. So there is the VS100, the VS010, uh, uh, the 2000, and so on. And uh, those are different classes, uh, classes A, B, C. Um, we've got two chipsets chip in the class C. We've got D and E. And here in the table, you can see exactly what is supported with the different chipset. For example, if you look at the class B chipset, the VS010, which is also called the HDBase T Lite chipset, this chipset supports uh, a distance up to 70 meter with 1080p or 40 meter with uh, um, uh, 4K. Um, all the transmissions obviously here is over CAT cable. Um, but for example, the class B chipset does not support Ethernet path through. It does support the control signals. It does not support USB. And uh, all of them are supporting HDMI. And you, see, uh, and you can see here class A and B are supporting HDMI 1.4. Uh, and if you look at class C, that's already the next generation, which is supporting HDMI 2.0. So chipset class A and B is the HDBase T generation 1.0. And from starting from class C, we're talking about HDBase T 2.0. And I think that the most interesting chipset here is the uh, class C chipset, um, not the, the uh, VS2000, but the 2310. The 2310 is uh, able to transmit 4K signals up to 100 meter uh, over the CAT cable. It's supporting Ethernet pass-through. It's supporting IR and RS-232. 
it's supporting USB, it's supporting HDMI, and it's the HDBase-T2.0 standard. So this is the most advanced chipset with the most features. And if you need all of those signals, uh, make sure you're purchasing uh, a device which has this chipset built in. If you maybe just need uh, uh, 4K over 100 meter, uh, but you don't require a USB, feel free to take a cheaper product uh, with a chipset uh, with a VS2000. So that's the big difference here. Uh, in some products, we have the chipset uh, with a, the VS2000, the Class C chipset, uh, without USB. And uh, with other products, we're using the uh, Class C chipset, which is supporting USB. So here you can make sure uh, what is required for your installation, and then you can simply choose the right HD-based T product with the uh, right class uh, of, of chipset. There is also uh, the last line here. There's also an HD-based T chipset which supports uh, HD-based T over fiber. So here we can go up to 10 kilometer over fiber cable. Um, that's the class E chipset. Um, I just wanted to add it here to the uh, to the slide that you heard about it, but I'm, I'm not uh, talking in detail about this specific chipset. So uh, with HDBase-T, uh, we're supporting uh, 10.2 gigabits over the CAT cable and the frequency up to 500 uh, megahertz. Uh, higher signals can be uh, also passed over HDBase-T, but then we, we have to use a uh, visual looseness compression. And uh, the name already says here, visually looseless. It means you will not notice on your image quality that there is any kind of compression on your signal. Um, but there is a small compression to transmit, for example, a 4K 444 signal, 60 hertz, over the uh, HD base T line. Without the compression, we would be not able to, uh, uh, or with HD base T, you would, you would not be able to transmit uh, the 4K 444 signal, for example. Um, very important to know is the EDID management over HD base T. So there are different ways on how you can handle EDID. EDID is the display information which uh, is passed to the source, uh, and the source will, based on the EDID information, uh, send out a, a working resolution for your display. Some HD base T products they have a smart EDID management. So that means they can read the display EDID and they can either just bypass it to the source or they can manipulate the EDID and they can pass an EDID information to the source, which will work for display, but also for your HD base T uh, extender set, for example. So that's a, a smart solution to make sure in case you have a 4K display, uh, um, which is supporting 4K 60 or 444, and you have a source which can also uh, send out 4K uh, 60 or 444, but maybe you have a, an HD base T extender which cannot support or which can't uh, handle this resolution. Uh, if you just bypass the EDID information, you basically would not have any picture because uh, the source will send you a resolution which the display can understand, but your HD base T line cannot handle. And that's why there, there are products which have a smart EDID. They will see, okay, this display has a maximum resolution of, uh, uh, let's take a different example of 8K, but uh, the extender can only handle 4K. So the extender will tell the source, hey, I need a 4K resolution for the display. So I, I hope I could uh, explain you a little bit uh, the smart EDID uh, system. Um, another, another important thing to know with HD base T is the frequency, so the, the megahertz and how you can calculate them. Uh, yeah, you, you, you don't have to calculate them every time by yourself. Uh, it's just important to know uh, that you understand that, for example, uh, a 1080p signal with a refresh rate of 60 hertz uh, has a frequency of 187 uh, 187 megahertz. Uh, but if you look, for example, here in a 4K signal, all of them are above 300 megahertz. 
So um, your HDMI's T line can handle this. But now your cable, your CAT cable, uh, you have to make sure that your CAT cable is also able to uh, transmit uh, this frequency. And we're looking into uh, the CAT cables in a second, but just keep in mind the frequency is the pixel uh, and the refresh rate um, combined, and that will give you your frequency. And you have to make sure that the maximum frequency uh, which you can calculate is, is lower than the maximum frequency your cable, your CAT cable can handle. So bottom line here is HD base T will work with a CAT 5E cable. For example, the CAT 5E cable can transmit HD base T signals as long as the signal you send is lower than the maximum frequency of the uh, CAT 5E cable. So here we're looking into the CAT cable. A CAT cable is not a CAT cable. Uh, we have different categories here. We have, for example, CAT 5E, we have CAT 6, CAT 6A, and CAT 7. So now we're looking into, into this chart here. The CAT 5E has a maximum bandwidth of 100 megahertz. Uh, we go back one slide, and you see here, even the uh, 1080p signal with the 60 hertz is already above the CAT 5E maximum bandwidth. So as, as soon as you work with HDBST and full HD or higher resolutions, you want to make sure that you use at least a CAT 6 cable. We recommend CAT 6A or CAT 7 cable to be very safe. Let me know if you have any questions here or if that's uh, all clear. Uh, for example, we have here our uh, IQ line. You can find uh, our IQ line on our homepage on purelink.de or 1av.eu. And uh, here we, we have the CAT 6A cable, which supports the 500 megahertz, which is a 10G based T Ethernet and HD based T certified cable. Uh, obviously, we as Purelink always have a, a high quality standard on our cables. So we have the gold plated uh, contacts. Uh, here with this specific cable, we have the nitric contacts. Um, we have the uh, SFTP shielding. So there are a lot of extra features to make sure we, we can transmit an HD based T signal with our cable. Uh, if you are still looking or searching for uh, an HD based T certified cable, reach out to your sales re representative and they, they will make an offer uh, for our IQ line which is definitely able to handle your HDMST installation. And another uh, feature what we have, or another uh, cable here, is the uh, regular uh, IQ line with the regular RJ45 uh, connectors. Uh, but here, the same. We have the same uh, gold-plated contacts. We have the same uh, uh, SFTP shielding. So. Um, Tested with HD base T, tested with 10G base T, uh, and it can handle the 500 megahertz. Back to our EDID management. Um, I just mentioned it uh, up front. There is a question in the chat. Oh no, uh, Stefan just sent you the link in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you, Stefan. Um, back to the EDID management. So now we know that our cable can handle the signal. Now we know that our uh, EDID man that management is, uh, is working. So what is happening if we are working with an extender which does not have a uh, smart EDID management, which is just passing through uh, the EDID of the display to the source? Uh, let's go back to our 8K um, example. So. Let's pretend that this display here is an 8K display, and the source, what we have here, can also send out an 8K signal. But we are working here with a class C HD based T extender, which can handle up to 4K. And the EDID is a pass through technology. So now the display would send over HD based T the display information to the source. The source will see, oh, I have to send out an 8K signal. OK, I can send out an 8K signal, and it will immediately transmit the 8K signal over HD base T. Uh, we know our installation is done correct. We have the correct cable. We have uh, all the correct settings. But we will not have a picture 
because our HD-based extender cannot handle 8K. So that, that's, that's happening if you're working with an HD-based extender, which is, pass, uh, which is just passing through the um, EDID information. I'm not saying that you should not work with those extenders. Uh, it's just important that if you have such an extender, which has not a smart EDID management, make sure that uh, your installation or all your devices in your installation are all supporting uh, the same maximum resolution. So the most important is uh, every single part in your HTBST installation, uh, in your signal path, uh, path is important. So we, we just spoke about an uh, HDBST certified cable. Uh, we, we spoke about a CAT6 cable. Uh, you should use a CAT6A cable to have uh, the 500 megahertz. Um, but usually in a, in a regular installation, you, you, you do not connect a, a transmitter uh, direct to a receiver. You have maybe a, a floor tank, uh, you have a wall socket, or you have a patch panel. All those devices need to be on the same category. So, for example, if you're using CAT7 installation cable, uh, and, uh, you have a, a CAT7 patch cable, uh, you have your uh, HDBST products, everything is HDBST certified, but you are running through a CAT5E patch panel, your whole installation will be limited to CAT5E. So, you're spending a lot of money for certified uh, cables, for transmitters, for receivers. Uh, but at the end of the day, your whole installation will be downsized to CAT5E because you're running through a CAT5E um, patch panel. So here it's important um, that you make sure if you work with CAT5E, uh, if you work with the CAT6A uh, cable, if you work with a CAT6A patch panel, um, Make sure that all the devices, even the small RJ45 couplers, which we see from time to time in an installation, are on the same standard. They are all on the same CAT6A standard. As soon as you add one single device, even if it's just a small coupler, which is uh, on uh, CAT5E, your whole installation is downsized and limited to CAT5E. Yeah. Again, to sum it up here, uh, we have audio video, bidirectional. Why is it bidirectional? Because there we have the, the transmission uh, of the audio video signal from the source to the sink, but we have the uh, uh, transmission of uh, uh, the EDID information back to the, to the source. Uh, we have RS-232 in, in both directions. We have uh, USB 2.0 in both directions. And we have, in this case, um, we have unidirectional POC. That's our uh, HD-based extender, the uh, uh, HD-based extender, which is supporting USB 2.0. Um, in this case, you can see it here in the picture. We have one power supply on the transmitter. Uh, we have no power supply on the receiver. So here, we connect the power supply only on the transmitter, and it's sending out POC to the receiver, and the receiver is powered up uh, from the transmitter. You can connect those those two devices, the transmitter and the receiver, together. Um, you can also add other HD-based devices in the line, but you have to make sure that all the devices you're going to connect are supporting POC. And if you, for example, if you connect a, a different receiver to the transmitter, the receiver will always receive the 24 volt coming from the transmitter. So if your receiver cannot handle the 24 volt, uh, you could damage your receiver. So we recommend here to make sure uh, you go through all your data sheets from all the products and make sure they're all on the same page and they're all on the same standard. Uh, as promised, uh, USB over HD-based T, uh, which I mentioned earlier, is a, uh, is a unique topic, I would say, because uh, here uh, HD-based T is supporting USB, it's supporting USB 2.0, but USB 2.0, the standard allows a transmission up to 480 megabits per second. Um, 
if you're connecting your USB device with a USB cable to your computer. That's the maximum uh, transmission uh, you can reach with USB 2.0. If you go over HD-based T, there is a limitation. HD-based T itself supports USB 2.0 and all those features which are coming with uh, USB 2.0, but the, the maximum speed is limited to 108, uh, 190 megabits. And that's that's super important to know because we, we see it uh, or we have seen it more than just once uh, that uh, customers are calling in and saying, hey, we have the, the USB extender. And uh, if I, for example, if I lower, uh, if I connect my uh, webcam, uh, everything is working fine. If I'm running my webcam on uh, 1080p, but if I'm uh, going uh, with a webcam on 4K, um, I, I lose picture, I lose connection, and my, my USB camera is not recognized any longer. And that's exactly uh, what is written here. Um, the maximum speed is 190 megabits. So if your device, uh, if you have a smart USB camera, for example, which uh, is uh, able to work on USB 2.0, even with limited uh, uh, maximum speed, uh, you can use this camera uh, as long as you are uh, below the 190 megabits. But if you have a device, uh, audio device, for example, a uh, speakerphone or a USB uh, microphone, uh, which needs a uh, USB 2.0 with the full capacity, uh, with the full 480 megabits, it most likely will not work. So here it's very important if you add a USB device into your uh, installation and you want to run the USB device over HDBase-T, uh, make sure that uh, the device is either tested with the HDBase-T product or you can find uh, in the specification what is the uh, maximum speed the device needs over HDBase-T. Again, with the USB 2.0, we can transmit, uh, the transmission is up to 480 megabit, but over HDBase-T, USB 2.0 is supported but with a limited speed of 190 megabits. Twenty-eight minutes, and we're at the very end. It was a lot of information. It was very technical. Um, I hope I could explain you HD based T a little bit, and I hope you could, uh, or you you could receive some information which are important for your installation. Um, I, I think the most important uh, is, uh, uh, to sum it up, uh, is the bandwidth limitation which we have uh, on USB. Uh, it's the limitation uh, with the EDID management or the feature with the EDID management and uh, with the power over category cable uh, or power over uh, copper. Um, that you make sure that all your devices are uh, running on the same technology. Um, I think that's uh, it for uh, my presentation. So if you have any questions or if something was not clear, please use the chat function and I'm going to answer it as good as possible. I'm going to stay online for a couple more minutes so we can have a chat uh, here in the chat function. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day.